Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today I want to talk with you about using Lightroom with Luminar AI. So some of you who use Luminar AI, you use it as a plugin and Lightroom is your home base. And there's several different ways that you can work between the two programs and the most pro uh, prevalent, that's the word I was looking for, is to use the Luminar AI plugin for Lightroom Classic. And that's a great tool and that's how I primarily use it. But if you are a photographer who does several images in a series and you want everything in that series to have a cohesive look and feel and you're pressed for time and you're looking for an efficient workflow, sometimes using just the plugin isn't the best way to go. So I'm going to give you a couple of different workarounds today that you can give a try and hopefully those will help speed up your workflow. These are great tips for if you are a portrait photographer and you have an entire series of photos, if you're a product photographer, anything that requires you to go through and do a whole series of images and you want to get through them quickly and efficiently. I want to take a moment and say hello to Pat and Joseph. Glad you guys are able to join me today. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I have a folder up here on my computer. Um, I'm in Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and I have a series of images all from the same photo shoot. I want to process these images so they all have a similar look and feel so I can deliver them to my client. Now when you're using the plugin, the typical workflow is to go to right click on your image, go to export, and then go up to Luminar AI and you can choose to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments or open the source files. Today we're going to work with open source files and this is going to open my raw file in Luminar AI and I'm going to be able to edit that one single image. So let's go ahead and walk through that. We'll do a quick edit on this image. We'll create a new custom template and that'll allow us to work a little bit more fast with our other images. Hello, Claire. Good to see you from rainy Orlando, Florida. I heard you guys are having a heck of a storm later this week. I hope you guys all get through it safely and don't get too, too soaked or blown away. All right, so we have our image up here in Luminar AI. I'm gonna go to the influencer category, which is in for this photo. It's a suggested pack of templates for this image and choose that pack and I'm gonna go down to Cozy Den. And I really like the warmth and the atmosphere that this template creates in this image, but I wanna make a few other changes just to refine the look. And that way I can use that particular template on a series of images. Now I'm gonna go over to edit and I'm gonna begin by going down to the film grain and you can see which tools are used because of the little dot next to each tool. I'm gonna to go to film grain and I'm gonna turn that off. I typically don't like to add grain to my images, so if I see a template that adds that, I like to go in and usually remove it. To me, it doesn't add much, but you do you. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is go up to our glow tool, and I wanna brighten this up and give it a nice soft glow. So let's go ahead and bring this amount slider up. We'll take a look at what that does. We're in soft focus, and we can kind of audition some of these different types of glow that we have available and see which one works best. Uh, let's see, Orton is nice, but I really like, for this particular image, I like Orton Effect Soft. And now I'm going to go down in my advanced settings, and I'm going to adjust the brightness down just a tiny bit. And we can adjust the contrast to see what makes this look better. I think a little bit of additional contrast looks nice. And we can even warm that up a tiny bit. So that looks really, really good. Now I want to save this as a custom template that I can apply to other images. To do that, I'm going to go down to the ellipses button at the bottom and click Save. Now before I move on, I wanna do one more thing to this image. If this was what I was doing, and what I mean by that is going one at a time from Lightroom, I'm gonna make my adjustments here in Luminar before I go back to, into Lightroom. So I'm gonna go up to my Composition AI. I'm gonna do a quick crop on this and just straighten out this image. There we go. And I think that looks great. Now, before we go back over to Lightroom, you can see we can click the Apply button and that'll take us straight back to Lightroom. But before we do that, I wanna go over to my templates. And you'll notice when we go back into my templates, we have a brand new Cozy Den edit. That's the template we just created. So I'm going to click on that ellipses, choose Rename, and I'm gonna call this Kitchen. And if I can spell. There we go. All right, so now I have my second kitchen template. You can see I've created one before. If you add a template and you wanna get rid of it, you can always click on that ellipses and click delete. So now I'm removing my old one and now I have my new one. All right, we're done with this image and now we can go hit apply and this will take us on a round trip back to Lightroom. Once we're back in Lightroom, we have a couple of options. 
we can click the next image, apply our template, make any adjustments, and take them one at a time. And that's fine if you have five to 10 images, that's workable. If you have 50 or 100 images, or maybe even just 30, that can be really time consuming. So I wanna give you a couple of options of what you can do to work th through this a little bit faster. Let's see here. Claire said, more indoor time to work on photos. That's a great outlook to have when you have a hurricane headed your direction. So hope you get in some good indoor tabletop, whatever you like to do, macro, all sorts of fun stuff you can do inside the house. All right, so now we're back here in Lightroom and we wanna do something a little bit faster than taking these one by one. So I have these on an external hard drive um, that's connected to my computer. What I can do is actually go over to Luminar and I can point my Luminar catalog to that exact same folder. So you can see here's the one we just edited, that edit, and then all of the rest of these are my raw images. So what we can do is let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna go back here to Lightroom here for just one second, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one that we just did. I'm gonna remove that and delete it from the disk, and that's gonna make this a little bit easier and cleaner. You don't need to follow along with that step, that's just me cleaning up my own mess. Okay. So when we do this, I'm gonna right click on this image and go show in Finder. And this is gonna pull up the Finder on my, com on my computer. You can see here's the kitchen folder, here's all of our raw files. And that's the exact same folder that I have Luminar pointed to. Now what I can do is go ahead and grab that image, go to my templates, let's give it a moment there to load. And now I can add that kitchen template that we just created and voila, that image is edited. Now, because we have these all in our Luminar catalog, what we can do is go back over to the catalog tab and I can click on the one we edited. Hold down my this series is going to get that exact same treatment. That's really cool and that saves us so much time. Now, if any one of these images need to be tweaked, let's say for instance, these three right here are a little too warm. So I'm going to click on that one. We'll go over to edit and I'm going to, let's see here, Let's just scroll up to our light tool and I'm gonna pull back a little bit on the temperature just to cool it off a bit. I think that works a little bit more closely with the other images in the series. And I'll go back to my catalog. Now, since I adjusted this image, these two here still need to be adjusted. Again, I can click this one as my source image, hold down my shift key to select all three of these, right click on this image, go to adjustments and synchronize those adjustments and that'll correct the white balance in these two images as well. And now you see we have a cohesive set of images. Now you can go in and work on each of these individually if you wanted to add some face, face light. So for instance, in this image here, their faces are a little bit dark and in the shadows, we can go over to edit and scroll down to our face AI, pull up a little bit of face light and that's going to light their faces a little bit better. And you can go through these images and make some of those fine tune adjustments that they might need. So I'm gonna add a little bit more face AI here, a little bit more face light, and not every image needs this. It's just some of these ones where their faces are a little bit more in the shadows. It just wakes those little details up. So you can go through and correct these individually after you've gotten your look and feel finalized. You can even go through and crop, rotate, whatever you need to do. Now, the question is, how do you get all of these edits back to Lightroom? That's the big question, right? So what I like to do is go ahead, I'm gonna do a Command A, or you can do a Control A if you're on Windows. So Command A for Mac, Control A for Windows, that selects everything in your folder. So everything that's up on the screen is now selected. I can right click on those images and go to Export. And I'm going to save these back to that source folder. So now if I go down to my Photos Drive and into, let's see here, it's my Skyland Demo Library. Let's see if I can remember. Hey everyone, it looks like I got disconnected there for a moment, so I'm not sure where it left off. Uh, looks like a few of you said that it was frozen, so I'm so sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened. Gotta love live shows. Okay, so let me back up a little bit and just see if I can cover what we did. I went ahead and made my edits to all of the images, our raw images in Luminar AI. I then exported a copy to a Luminar AI edits folder. So if I go back over to my finder here on my computer, Here's the source folder we were working with. Here's our original RAWs that both Lightroom and Luminar were pointed to. And then here's my subfolder I created with those exported files from Luminar AI. Once I exported these files with all of my Luminar AI edits, 
Luminar automatically sees them and brings them in. With Lightroom, it doesn't happen automatically. In order to make it, in order to get those images into Lightroom, what you have to do is go to your folder, right click, and you choose synchronize. And that will import any additional images you've added to that folder or subfolders after this, this folder was brought into Lightroom. All right, let me take a look here at, at, the, um, at the chat. See, Pat says, did I answer the questions while you're frozen? You know, I might have. Let me take a look here and see what else we've got. All right, so does this put copies into the Luminar catalog or do they stay only in Lightroom? This makes both. So when we take our images and we point Luminar to, um, let's see, let me go ahead and just bring this down here. So we have our Luminar AI edits. These were our exports. And then we have our original images here. So this brings in double images into Luminar AI. We have our originals that we edited and then we have our exported copies. So if you see, if I click on the first one down here in the bottom right, you'll see it's a CR3, that's our raw file. And if I click on the next one that's identical, it's actually a TIFF file. So this is our, our edit that has been exported with those changes baked in. And then this is our raw file that's completely re-editable. We can always go over into edit and make additional changes. So when we export images into that source file, Luminar sees all of them automatically. Now, if we go back over to Lightroom and we take a look, we now have our kitchen folder, which is everything and its subfolders, and we have our Luminar AI edits. So under our kitchen folder, which does contain the edits, you can see here's our original raw, here's our edited TIFF. Here's our original raw, here's our edited TIFF. So I hope that answers your question, Pat. It looks like you had another one here. If you choose not to load the catalog in Luminar, does that mean you can't do this? That's correct. So when you first load Luminar AI, a catalog is created. You don't ever have to put anything into it, but the catalog is there. That, that module is always there, even if all you do is use it as a plugin. Now, this is just a workaround to enable you to go in and make use of a faster workflow. If once you're done, you don't think you're gonna need to edit those images ever again, you can go up to this folder here in Luminar that you brought in and you can remove it from your Luminar catalog. Now, because this is not the parent folder, I'd have to come here to my parent folder. So I can click on this and then I can say remove from catalog. If you brought in just a single folder, you can always remove it from the catalog, get rid of it and you're done. Now, what happens when you do that is you lose all of your edits. So these things become not re-editable. So if I wanted to make some changes to this one right here, I wanted to go over to edit and you can see that all of my changes, you can see which tools were used, everything is still re-editable. So let's say I wanted to go to Composition AI, I wanted to straighten this out and do a little bit of cropping. Let's go ahead and bring that in. All of those things are still re-editable. And how much space do you wanna take up on your hard drive? Now the catalog doesn't take up that much extra space. Since we're pointing to those same raw files that Lightroom points to, we're not taking up any extra space there either. So it's just the size of the catalog, which does have some preview files and things like that. So it does take up some space, but it's not huge. Um, if you're concerned, just leave it alone and you can always go back and edit those if you need to. Just remember that if you want any changes made in Luminar to, sh to show, so if I go ahead and hit return here, I've made a couple of changes. You'll notice that these changes are not gonna be reflected in Lightroom. I would have to export a fresh copy. All right. Hopefully that answers your questions, Pat. If you need any further clarifications, please pop it into the chat or into the comments if the recording somehow gets cut off again. I'm so sorry that there was a glitch in the stream today. Um, that pretty much covers what I wanted to show you today. So it is a workaround for getting your images from Lightroom to Luminar AI a bit faster than taking them one by one. It is definitely a workaround. It's not really what we would call a published technique but it gets the job done, especially if you have a lot of images to work with. So hope that was good. If you guys like this episode, minus the break in the stream, please give us a thumbs up here in YouTube. Um, we appreciate seeing that our producers like seeing it and leave your comments below and I will do my best to answer all the questions that you have. With that, I wanna wish you guys a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.